Hello guys, I hope y'all are having a great day. Uh, if not, then maybe this video can help cheer you up. So let's see, what is a basis? What are basis vectors? Um, so whenever you talk about a basis, you're, you're always going to talk about it in, in the context of a subspace. So like you always want to say a basis for a subspace. Um, so for example, a basis for a subspace called V is a set of linearly independent vectors that span V. So let's do this example problem. Find a basis for R3. R3 is a subspace, right? It meets the three conditions for a subspace. And we want to find what are the basis vectors for R3. So to do that, we need, a, we need to find a, a collection of vectors, a set of vectors that spans R3, okay? But that collection of vectors, that the set has to be linearly independent. So let me give you some possible answers and then we'll go through and see uh, are these sets that I'm writing, are they, do they form a basis for R3? Okay, so we could have this set of three vectors. Right? We could have, actually, I'm just going to pause the video and, and come back. Okay, so I've written these four sets of vectors. And for each of them, we need to go through and determine, do they form, do the, is the set of vectors a basis for R3? So this first one, we have, the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we need to see, first of all, do those vectors even span R3? The answer is yes, because um, I can write any vector in R3 as a linear combination of these three. So the span of these three is, the, is all of R3. But the next condition for this set of vectors to be a basis for R3 is that the set has to be linearly independent. And you can see that that's true, right? I can't write any of these vectors as a linear combination of the others. So this set of three vectors spans R3 and the set is linearly independent. So we say, yes, this set is a basis for R3. Or you could say these three vectors form a basis for R3. Okay, moving to the next one. Here you can see we have a similar set, except now we've added this extra vector over here. And so, right, if we're trying to determine is this, do these vectors form a basis for R3? First thing we need to determine is, did the set of vectors span R3? And yeah, they, they still do, right? I mean, these three vectors span R3. We have this one, the span doesn't change. So this span is still R3. But the problem is this set of vectors is no longer linearly independent, right? For example, you could write this vector as the sum of these three. So you could write it as a linear combination of these three. Um, and this goes back to when I was talking about a set of linearly dependent vectors has at least one redundant vector when you're trying to define the span. So for example, we already knew that the span of, of the set of vectors was R3 just by looking at the first three vectors. Why do we need to know this one, right? It's, you could think of it as a redundant vector. Okay, so because of that, the set of vectors is linearly dependent. And so although these four vectors span R3, they do not form a basis for R3. So no. Okay, this next one, we have these three vectors. Um, first of all, do they span R3? And it's a little tricky. You gotta be kind of clever, but if you notice this vector, here, 5, 6, 2, is just the sum of the first two vectors in the set. And so these two vectors span, these two vectors are not scalar multiples of each other. So the span of these first two vectors is a plane in R3. Um, but this vector is in the span of the first two. And so this vector is in that same plane that's spanned by the first two vectors. So the span of all three is, is a plane. It's not R3. And so this set of vectors doesn't even span R3, so it's definitely not a basis for R3, right? Are these three vectors a basis for that plane spanned by 5, 4, 3, and 0, 2, negative 1? No, right? Because even though they span that plane, um, the three vectors are not linearly independent. Okay, anyway, they're not a the, these three are not a basis for R3. That's all you need to know. All right, this last one, you have 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 5, 0, and 1, 2, 3. So first question, do these three vectors span R3? Yeah, they do. I mean, if you put these three vectors into a matrix, you got three pivots. And so the span of the three is going to be R3. Um, they're also linearly independent, right? I, I can't pick any of these vectors and write it as a linear combination of the others. Um, there's a more like thorough way to figure that stuff out. And so check my other videos for that. But because these three vectors span R3 and they're linearly independent, perfect. It is These three vectors form a basis for R3. And so my point, um, my point for including this fourth example is that there's actually infinitely many base, bases for R3, right? There's never like one unique set of vectors that form a basis for a subspace. There could be infinitely many bases. 
Um, okay, so that about does it. Hopefully you have a better understanding what a basis is um, for linear algebra. And I'll see you in the next video when we're going to be talking about finding a basis for the column space of a matrix and the null space of a matrix. Okay, I'll see you then.